Hello, everybody. Uh, hope every one of you is doing quite fine. I was hoping to meet you face to face, but uh, anyhow, I'll do my best uh, to deliver the material to you and the knowledge of investment uh, in a quite beneficial way. I redesigned the the PowerPoint presentation in order to make it uh, quite active. Uh, I combined all of the Excel files into the PowerPoint, so I'll take you step by step uh, through the solution. I'll, I'll, I'll be providing you the Excel file with solutions as well, but uh, all solutions are in the PowerPoint, so when you play the PowerPoint, you'll have a screenshots of uh, the Excel file with solutions. Uh, I'll tell you how we do, how we work out the solution and how we interpret the results, and this is what matters to me. Um, in case we'll have exams, uh, you'll be asked about the the interpretation uh, ra rather than the the calculation. Uh, but since we did not meet for for some time, I just need to give you a, a brief preview of what we did so far because we have been talking a lot about the interest rates. Uh, this is a brief uh, of what we did so far, the, the topics we covered. Uh, still, we have only one topic, which was, I'm going to do it now. Uh, but since uh, the beginning of the semester, uh, as I said, we covered many topics about the interest rate. We, we talked about uh, how we understand the interest rate and why do we need to understand the term interest rate. Uh, the, the term interest rate is quite casual and uh, quite flexible. It means many things to many people. And maybe the connection between interest rate and investment is what matters to us. Our course is about investment management. So it's about how to make an investment decision. Uh, as I said, if you recall from the first lecture that we are not able to understand uh, what do we mean by investment decision unless we have a thorough understanding of the term interest rate? Everyone is making an investment in order to end up with a rate of return, which we call it casually, again, the interest rate. Uh, and the required rate of return on investment varies from one person to another and varies from uh, one time to another. Uh, the, the, the second point, why the interest rate is important for making an investment decision because actually in, in many cases the investment decision will not be taken if uh, you end up with an internal rate of return uh, less than the interest rate in a bank for example uh, we had a lot of discussion about this one and then we move to the money market rates because these are uh, I would say the starting point of making an investment decision uh, it exists all over the world, including our country, that most of the people, even the risk averse investors, uh, would be looking at the money market rates because of many reasons. The first one, uh, we have many financial instruments in the money market rates. The second reason is that uh, the money market rates are referred to as uh, commonly, the risk-free rate of return. So we assume that if someone is making an uh, or is thinking about an investment, any sort of investment, uh, would compare between the expected rate of return of this investment and what can he or she receive from uh, the government, which we refer to as the money market rate. So the money market rate, uh, actually, in every single country, maybe in uh, with few exceptions, uh, is the minimum rate of return any investor uh, expects. Then we move to the mathematical difference between the interest rate, which we called it the simple and effective annual rate. The simple interest rate is the uh, simply the uh, the annual interest rate, but the effective uh, is a compound interest rate. Then we move to the uh, rates and yields on fixed income security. As you recall, this is a, a quite independent course. It's quite uh, informative because uh, 
it carries a lot of similarities between what you receive from a bank, for example, when you deposit your, your money in a bank and you receive a fixed income uh, uh, on a deposit and you invest your money in a stock market and you receive the same fixed income if you're investing in bonds, for example. This is a quite huge market, but again, it's quite interesting and very attractive to many investors since it guarantees a certain uh, uh, amount of income at regular basis. If you're investing in bonds, you receive the return every six, uh, six months, it's semi-annual. And then we move to the uh, Treasury yield curve, and this is uh, used for foreseeing uh, what happens to the interest rate, uh, the risk-free rate of return in the short term. So the curve is a reference to foreseeing the interest rate in the, in the short term. Uh, then we move to what's commonly called the term structure of interest rate. And again, as recall, uh, this is an independent course, uh, where it has been found that the people who are investing their money in, in long-term interest rate, for example, a bond that matures in about 50 years or so, uh, would not be waiting to receive the interest rate every six months. Or so uh, part of the financial innovation that this bond has been divided into uh, parts uh, separate parts, uh, every part sold in a, a separate price with a certain separate income, and this is what's commonly referred to as strips. And we did some uh, uh, exercises on it. The last uh, uh, point uh, we stopped that in the last lecture is the implied forward rate. The forward rate is a forward looking interest rate, and it refers simply to how can you foresee, predict, I would say, the interest rate uh, using the movement for, uh, of the interest rate from one year to another, from one week to another, um, and so on. Uh, the term implied means that you use certain equations to calculate the interest rate. And again, the forward rate is that uh, means uh, you are uh, expecting a certain uh, interest rate in the short term as well. The last one, which uh, I'm covering in this material, is the difference between the nominal and the real interest rate. And this is what we began. Uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, every single interest rate, whatever it is, it's, uh, in the money market or any other financial market, is called a nominal uh, interest rate. Probably this is the most uh, important term or concept of interest rate that touches anyone's life, including our life, uh, simply because it takes into consideration what happens uh, to the money you receive out of an interest rate, which we call it the real interest rate. So we need to differentiate uh, between what we call it nominal interest rate and real interest rate. Actually, what's published in, by any financial institution uh, is a nominal interest rate, but it doesn't write as nominal. But the real interest rate is what you calculate. Uh, the real interest rate is, is never published by any institution in any country. It's your doing. So, uh, uh, the difference between the nominal and the real is the inflation rate. Uh, uh, we can put it in a very simple term. If, if you look at uh, uh, an interest rate, which is currently about 15% in Egypt, and if the inflation rate is greater than 15%, it means that whenever you deposit an amount of money in a bank and you receive 15% at the end of the year, but the inflation rate is greater than 15%, so the real interest rate is negative. I mean, uh, you are spending more money on uh, your everyday life, public goods, more than what you receive from a bank. So what really very effective for making an investment decision for either individual investors or institutional investors is the real interest rate. It's not nominal. Uh, it has been uh, uh, 
referred to as uh, Fisher hypothesis or sometimes it's called the Fisher effect and it's a reference to a professor of economics Irving Fisher who came up with this uh, concept in the uh, 1907. He was the first economist to refer, uh, sorry, to dis distinguish between the uh, the nominal interest rate and the real interest rate, uh, and came up with the conclusion that the interest rate in any society cannot be taken as a return on investment unless one mathematical condition satisfies that the inflation rate equal to zero. So if the inflation rate equal to zero, it goes without saying that the uh, what you receive from a bank, for example, is exactly the amount of money that is available for expenditure. And that's why the nominal interest rate equal to the real interest rate. But since uh, the zero inflation rate is quite rare and all over the world, so we need to take into consideration how to differentiate between the nominal interest rate and the real interest rate. Uh, uh, it has been uh, examined through our time. It is not the only graph we have in, in, the, in economics, but uh, it has been uh, examined looking at the graph from 1950 to 2015 that uh, the annual interest rate for the treasury bill rates uh, has been uh, following the inflation rate. And that's why I can uh, give you a new title, new name for what we call it risk-free. Actually, it's not free of risk, but it protects the investors against risk. So what we call it risk-free rate of return, as I said, it's a casual term, but the technical term it's an inflation risk-free rate of return, simply because the Federal Reserve um, abroad or any central bank in Europe adjusts the Treasury bill rate according to the expected inflation rate. So it goes without saying that the, if the Federal Reserve is expecting the inflation rate to increase somehow, they increase uh, the interest rate on Treasury bill. This is what we call it interest rate hikes. And therefore, it has been observed through time that the risk-free rate of return uh, follows uh, the inflation rate uh, to a great extent. It's like what uh, the graph is saying, the, the up and down is very close, the up and down in, in interest rates, uh, I mean risk-free interest rate on treasury bills uh, go uh, along with the expected inflation rate. Uh, now we have uh, all over the world uh, uh, a financial instrument. Uh, we call it inflation index at treasury securities, where the price of the security and the return you receive from the security is adjusted according to expected inflation. So if someone is investing in this uh, security, mostly it's a bond. We, in many cases, we call it inflation index and bond. Uh, they are protected against inflation. We don't have this one in Egypt, but uh, it's uh, uh, one of the very common financial, uh, financial instruments uh, in many parts of the world. In your Excel file, we have an application on uh, like, uh, an exercise in sheet 19, but again, I'm giving you here screenshots of what you have in the Excel file. Uh, if you go to the Excel file and uh, the same time with the, uh, the PowerPoint, I'm now explaining to you the components uh, we have and then how we do the calculation and at the end how we interpret the results. Uh, the inputs uh, say that we have, we assume and inflation is 1.5% over six months. And uh, the Federal Reserve uh, has issued a government bond where the face value is 1,000. Uh, 
So if the Federal Reserve is expecting the inflation rate uh, to go up by 1.5% annually, so the face value of the, of the bond would increase to uh, 1,015 1, by the end of the year. It is simply equal to 1,000 times 101.5, or you can take it simply as 1,000 multiplied by 1 plus the inflation rate. I mean 1,000 multiplied by open bracket 1.5%, 1 plus 1.5% equal to 1,015. Uh, the same is true for the coupon. If, uh, the Federal Reserve is paying the, the amount of coupon. Again, the amount of coupon is calculated exactly like an interest rate in, uh, uh, you receive from a deposit. So it's uh, simply the amount of or the value of the bond at the end of the year multiplied by the coupon rate. Now we assume that the coupon rate is 2% and since it is bid semi-annually, you divide it by two. So what you receive actually every six months is, is 10.15. Uh, let me show it to you how it goes in, in, in Excel. But before we go to Excel, this is kind of a piece of information. You may take it as a general knowledge to you. It's not uh, uh, subject to calculation that the treasury inflation protected securities uh, are quite uh, common. This is a screenshot of uh, the prices, selling prices, ask and buying prices a bid on May 15, 2012. Uh, this is to show you that uh, the, the buying and selling prices of inflation adjusted treasury securities are public information is published on, on daily basis. Just look at uh, the uh, the presentation here. This is the first screenshot of uh, the Excel file, and it shows to you how we calculate the value of the bond after six months, and then how we calculate the coupon payment after six months as well. If you go to the first one, the accrued principal, it means simply the value of the bond after six months. It calculates exactly like you calculate the uh, an interest uh, on a deposit. We multiply the face value of the bond by one plus the inflation rate, and this is what you have at the toolbar up there. The 1,000 stands for the uh, face value of the bond. As I said, it, uh, it's a standard value. It doesn't vary from one example to another, one bond to another. 1,000 uh, monetary uh, units. Uh, Egyptian pound, English pound, dollars, whatever it is, multiplied by one plus the inflation rate. So actually, if the face value of the bond is 1,000, the investor who is investing in this bond will receive, or the value of the bond will be 1,020 after six months. So he's going to receive 1,020 if he or she sells the bond after six months. Uh, but as you see here, the value of the bond increases from 1,000 to 1,020 after six months. The increase here is a compensation for the inflation, and this is what we call it 
the inflation effect. The same is true for the amount of uh, coupon payment. Uh, the investor will be receiving uh, 5.10. Actually, if you calculate the amount of coupon without taking the inflation into consideration, again, if you go to the toolbar, it's 1,000 times 1 plus 2 percent, which is the, the coupon rate divided by 2. It's equal to 5. But if you calculate the uh, amount of coupon payment based on the new value of the bond, which is 1,020 instead of 1,000, so the amount of coupon payment becomes 5.10. So again, the increase from 5 to 5.10 is the uh, compensation for uh, inflation. The same is true for, uh, and here is it, this is a calculation of uh, uh, the coupon payment equal to the expected value of the bond, I mean this one, 1,020, multiplied by the coupon rate uh, divided by 2. It's divided by 2 because it's paid semi-annual. Uh, in the next six months, if the Federal Reserve is expecting the inflation rate to go uh, further up, so we do the same calculation again. We calculate the expected value of the bond after six months. It's equal to the value of the bond uh, previously calculated. This is the E19, this one, multiplied by one plus the inflation rate again. So the 1,020 becomes 1,050. And this is the effect of the compensation for the inflation. And the same is true for the amount of coupon payment. Uh, it's equal to the current amount of coupon payment, 5.10, multiplied by uh, 1 plus the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the amount of coupon payment equal to the amount of accrued principal, multiplied by the coupon rate divided by 2. And here is it again. It's equal to the accrued principal times the amount, the percentage of uh, coupon divided by two because it's paid semi-annual. Uh, so you can realize that the amount of the group principal, I mean the face value of the bond is increasing from 1,000 to 1,020 due to the inflation and then to 1,050 due to the inflation again. And the same is true for the coupon payment it uh, went up from 5 to 5.10 due to inflation and from 5.10 to 5.25 due to the inflation. So as the inflation increases, the investor who is investing in this bond is receiving more money due to the uh, increases in inflation. And the same is true if the inflation goes down, the amount of money uh, decreases. This is the main reason that uh, uh, we look at this bond as inflation index bond. As the inflation increases, the face value of the bond increases. As the inflation decreases, the face value of the bond decreases. Again, the same is true for the, amount, the, the coupon payment. As the inflation increases, the amount of coupon payment increases. As the inflation decreases, the amount of coupon payment uh, decreases. Uh, now I'm going to go to the next slide in a few minutes. I mean, the next topic in a few minutes. Bye.